What is up, YouTube? HPJ here, and uh, as you can still tell, I'm still under the weather, so um, my voice is going to be in and out. But I'm going to try my best to do today's video because the LCG made a huge announcement um, in its latest update for its Forbidden Limited list. And we also have an Arata that is coming to the, TC to the LCG, so future tense, we probably will get this in the TCG. But it is time to take a look at the OCG's Forbidden, Forbidden Limited list, which will be going into effect January 1st of 2023. So, why well, don't we go ahead and take a full look at it. So, first off is the Forbidden section. We have Tier Elements, uh, Kikalios, and Barrier Statue of the Stormwind being forbidden. Then, for the Limited section, we have uh, Ancient Fairy Dragon, Kitar Kashtaria, Fenrir and Kashtaria Unicorn, Tier Elemental Saturn, Tier Elemental's Rhino Heart, and Tier Elemental. I mean, t I'm sorry, not Tier Elemental. Teller Knight Palomaeus, Bastio Magna Hemoth, uh, Black Wing Storm Cloak, Change of Heart, Prime uh, Planet Parapos, and Branded Fusion. For the Semi Limited, we have um, Galti, the Orgos Automaton, uh, Flop Frog, uh, Sci uh, excuse me, Sky Striker Ace Kagari, Yatagarasu, Rite of Amaser, uh, Infinity Launcher, uh, Bear, not Barrier Statue, Foolish Burial Goods, Regeki, and Trickstar uh, Light Stage. And then for the Unlimited, we have ABC Dragon Buster, Double Irish Magician, um, Water Enchantress of the Temple, uh, The Phantom Knights of Torn Scales, and Elixir of Scarlet um, Sandwich. So, yeah, this is the lineup of all the cards that have been changed in the OCG. So one of the bigger things, of course, is that uh, if you're playing Tier Elementals in OCG, they basically have killed uh, what's left of Tier Elementals, and they killed it very hard. You had at least two good formats for you guys, and then they said no more of this. Um, Tier Elementals in the Ishizu cards um, are Tier 0 from what I have Theme. And they have taken up majority of all of the, excuse me, tournaments within the last couple of months. And this, you know, this was about to happen. This literally was about to happen. Um, I think also for just the factor of there's so many things that make this R type broken. And of course, they eventually had to hit it as soon as possible to where if it did get new support, stuff just didn't get out of control. I mean, that all I have with the Yu-Gi-Oh, especially considering how different the OCG and CCG may try to be from each other, but it's always the same thing no matter how much you try to change the interaction. Um, now, with that said, um, yeah, Fusion Monster, several of the main deck monsters have now been hit. Um, I also believe their field spell has also been hit. It's a couple of their other supportive cards have been hit as well, just because this deck just its engine and everything is bananas. Um, now, next up is the Barrier Statue of Stormwind. And a lot of people are going to ask me, what was up with the Barrier Statue? Why did Barrier Statue get banned? Now, for just to make sure everyone understands, Barrier Statue of Stormwind's ability is that while it's on the field, neither player can set the Storm Monsters except for Wind. Now, being as it has this, you have to look at the difference between the TCG and the LCG. The OCG still has some more burger sovereignties. The TCG does not. While the TCG does not have some work, who was still running rampant in the OCG, the more had two options to summon things to the field. You either had the Omni Gate, which was Miss Valley Thunderbird, I mean, sorry, Apex Avu, or you took the advantage of Barry Section Stormwind to stall out your opponent because they'll have to normal summon to attack the monster, or they'd have to find a way to massively remove monsters on the board because some more ability prevented uh any winged beast that it targets with its link markers um would not be able to be targeted by card effect so because of this 
they have to get rid of the various statues. The, also, the other thing is, I believe, some of the um, Kastira, which I think might have been fin Fenrir and Unicorn, had the ability to uh, exceed into Raider Arsenal Falcon, and then also be able to touch some of the various statues of Stormwind. So, even if they did get rid of um, Samorg, the issue is that barrier statue of Stormwind would have still been running rampant. Now, I don't know as far as this goes in TCG, because I think it's still a couple of things missing. Because I think one of the big things, of course, is that some more is missing. So, yeah, that's a big reason for them banning it. I mean, this is also if you look at the OCG. I mean, if you look at Master Rules, they have to ban the barrier statue of the Stormwind because it was just too strong. There was just too many ways to play into it. And it was just basically a rapid succession of barriers that you win for the game. Now, with that said, and even though I'm a big advocate for playing the barrier statue in Swing Win, um, it does suck, but there are still other ways to play um, a lot of wind decks or a lot of win races. You also have to take into account Flow on Doris, which is another deck that took advantage of the barrier statue of Swing Win, and why that deck in its own survived so many different plays and so many different setups to where it took advantage of the barrier statue of Stormwind because a normal summon onto that monster is ridiculous. And remember, they change normal summons even on your opponent's turn. So changing into those to change summon into a monster like barrier statue of Stormwind created more issues. So could the TCG potentially swap barrier statue of Stormwind? to put some work back onto the gameplay, probably. Or at least give some work to that. Um, some type of diversity. But who needs to, needs us to say, we don't know yet, but we have to take into account of those things being an issue or potentially being a part of the issue, a part of the problem, part of the problem solving to help with things that could come potentially later on. Now, with that said, um, Ancient Fairy Dragon has been unbanned. So just in case anyone is wondering what's up with Ancient Fairy, um, bam, they have changed Ancient Fairy Dragon's effects. So initially, Ancient Fairy Dragon was able to use both of her effects during the same turn, and you can use multiples of them and still reset the effect. So to change that, they did this. They said, now you can only use the first and second effect of this card's name once per turn each. This is on one level four or lower monster from your hand, but you cannot conduct battle phase to turn you activate this effect. You can destroy as many field spells on the field as possible, but if you do gain 1,000 life points, then you can add one field spell from your deck to your hand with a different name in the one of the destroyed cards. So this um, change was definitely needed because of the fact that uh, with with um ancient fairy dragon you would basically pop your own field spell gain a thousand life points and search for your own search for a copy of your field spell you're gonna need these this a lot um we saw some chicken game plays with it and of course there was the old <coughs> excuse me there was the old deck um bombardment phoenix ftk that definitely took advantage of ancient fairy dragon in which Ancient Fairy Dragon could blow up stuff, uh, mainly field spells, and then go search for copies of that field spell. To where she would generate more of those field spells onto the board, and then you'd be able to take things out. Now, with that in tow, Ancient Fairy Dragon is the only thing coming off the Forbidden section. Um, Telenite Palamaeus is coming off. I guess simply because they want to bump up the Teller Knight. Um... There aren't too many things that Cyber Dragon Infinity can really do. Because there's so many ways to play out of it. So this would be a great bump to the Tower Knights. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Tower Knights were going to get support soon. That way it would even bump up more things. Change of Heart. Similar to the TCG, they unman uh, Change of Heart. I don't really know if Change of Heart is really going to be a game changer. Um, as much as other cards that have been previously banned and um, run back, because there's no right at a change of heart. Which is funny because Brain Control was banned as well. And Brain Control was just a watered down version of Change of Heart. And then that got a rider. 
because that card took advantage of things that King of Heart did a lot better. Oh, so, yeah. That is crazy. Um, moving on, I actually think it's next up is the brand infusion stuff. Um, it's, I mean, that is brand infusion. Fusion will always have aspects of it that are just really, really good. Whether it's branded fusion for the branded in the Desperia, Invoke, Dogmatica, uh, Shadal, and all of that. They're still taking advantage of those things and still playing around with the effects of cards so that they can uh, potentially give us. I don't know what a Prime, I don't know what Prime Planet um, Pal Palace CO is. But I have a funny feeling that it's probably another uh, card similar to Branded Fusion or related to the Branded Fusion stuff. Um, Black Wings Steam the Cloak. Bump up Black Wings with all their new support that they got. Uh, Bestial Magma Magma Mit. The Slowdown Bastion. Because they are a really, a really good splashable engine um, in things, especially stuff like uh, Sky Shaker. Um, I know there are a couple of tier elementals that were using them as well. And they're just the splash ability of things uh, tends to come into factor. So you got to start slowing down a couple of those to really take advantage, to really get the games going back to what they were ever really go back. Not really with all the shenanigans that Link and stuff does now. So, so you, uh, shenanigans, let's go on to the semi-limited section. Um, where mainly most of these cards were limited and they're, they're coming back to the semi-limited. Because a lot of this is going to bump up the play of the decks that they were used in without being too problematic. So you see the Orca Satomaton, Swap Frog, uh, Kagari, Yada, um, Rites of Asmir, that's for the uh, Adventure Tokens. Um, so that, you, you know, the, the spam of the Adventure Tokens and things like that, which is why they slowed that down because Adventure was so splashable. And a lot of the tier decks that they had to stop it. Because it was free token, free setup for token cards, free setup for link summons, massive boards to massive Omni Negate. Um, Infinity Launcher, I didn't expect to see. Um, I forgot this card was even limited. Uh, anyway, hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Oh, I had to get that up. So, yeah, we have a lot of splashable stuff. And then the Infinity Launcher, I didn't know it was still at one. I, I don't even know if it's still at one in the TCG. But it's just, I guess, to give Infinity some things. They probably need it. Foolish Burial of Goods. Excuse me, going to two. That's the Slow Down Sky Striker. And then taking advantage of the multiple things that they have. Now they have two Kigari. Two, um, was it? Two, uh, Engaged. Um, and, oh, yeah, right, Geki, too, yeah, they knew, they knew exactly what that, that they're gonna have to hit a lot of really good supportive cells to make sure that there weren't multiples of them so that Sky Checker could take advantage. Um, it's true, because they can, and it is crazy how much you get this. And, of course, the Trick Stars getting their field spell back to Simi Limited. I wonder how much of an advantage they're gonna really have. I don't think they're gonna have too much. But the slash ability of them can be deadly though, because they can burn with a lot of things. Yada, I'm not too really concerned about because it's Yada Garasu. Yada's not doing much here. Yada's not doing much over there. And Yada's one of those old school cards that I'm pretty sure they're like, hey, we can just bring this back. And it's not going to be any trouble. Everything in the game right now is so faster than Yada. That even if Yada locks you, because remember, Yada lock, it can be achieved, but it takes more stuff to achieve it. And then on top of that, a lot of the cards that made Yada what Yada was are Arata, like Sangan is Arata. So, um, I think I'm gonna take is Arata. Uh, Chaos Emperor Dragon is Arata. You know, there are all these older cards that came back with Arata to make sure that they cannot be so pliable or be as destructive as they used to be. So that's why bringing something back like Yada or Change Your Heart probably made it just a little more sufficient. Um, other than that, I mean, we can go on to the other particular cards on it. Because uh, Swap Frog, just to bump up the, uh, what is those things, the Splite? Especially now that uh, Rotten Toad is gone. 
and Orcos is getting back one of their big boss moves, one of their most util utilized loot bonuses. So I'm pretty sure those decks are happy. I wonder do they have Warp War in the OCG? I think they do. If they don't, I'm sure they're um have their other support cards. So then for the unlimited, which is not really much to say, um they're unlimited now, so they can run rapid as much as they can. But I'm sure other support cards for them are pretty much at the point of either they're still limited, they're only here to bump up other things, or it's just the fact that the metagame has just gotten to the point where these cards aren't as destructive as they used to be, and they're only here going back twice. So, Edlixer, Eldritch, Phantom Knight, Storm Scale, Rank 3 Toolbox stuff, um, Enchantress for the tokens, Double Iris Magician for, of course, the Pendulum. And the ABCs getting their boss monster back. So, yeah. Those are things. So, um, with that said, like, I, I don't think my final thoughts on this is that, um, I think many of the TCG players who look at this and say, wow, kind of wish our list was like this. And I do agree to some extent. Um, my only other issue is that if our list is going to be like this, then I want some things to come back. Um, more so, give us back some work and we'll trade in barriers at you. And possibly a Jim Fairy Dragon, if that's anything. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if TCG hit a little bit more of um, Tier Elementals, just because of the fact that it is Tier Elemental. Um, yeah, that I actually would have thought the TCG would have hit in Shizu cards. I'm surprised the TCG didn't. But, meh, we'll never know. And we did get an emergency ban list that really did do much. I thought it would, but you know, it's the same. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think of the new Forbidden Limited list for the OCG. What are your thoughts on it? What things would you have changed? What things would you like to see TCG change when we get our next Forbidden Limited list? So leave all that in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel as it helps out tremendously. There's a notification bell so you guys are informed when I do upload more content to the channel. You can also hit me up on social media. My links are in the description box below. And you guys can catch me on Twitch and twitch.tv slash Joe, where I'll be playing through The Legend of Zelda. So with that said, thanks everybody for watching, and I'll catch you all next time. HBJ signing out. Take care.